Hi friends, welcome to another episode of Making Disciples. My name is Chris and I'm your host. Welcome to the podcast. The purpose behind this podcast is to help us explore what does it mean to be disciples of Jesus in the everyday uh, what does it look like for us to live out Jesus, you know, making him our blueprint for our lives? And for the last couple of months now, we have been walking through the Sermon on the Mount. And we're not getting far uh, to the end, really. We've, got, we've only got a few more weeks left. It's not much longer to go. Uh, but we are now arriving at Matthew 7, 7 to 12, which is a famous passage where Jesus talks about asking, seeking, and knocking. So I'm going to explore those three phrases and you know what does it mean for us as disciples to ask, seek and knock? Uh, what does it mean for us to pursue God, to ask him to be involved with our lives, to be present and to help us uh, with what we've got in front of us? Uh, so you know this asking and seeking and knocking, chasing after God, God help me, God step in, God make a difference. So that's what we're going to look at. So uh, I hope this podcast is really helpful for you uh, because it's one of those passages that, uh, you know, many of us have heard sermons on many times, maybe. And we think, you know, I, we know it. We've got it. I understand what that's about. And I wanted to try and bring a couple of extra layers or levels uh, to this today, uh, not in a sermon format, but just in me chatting and talking. So uh, let's let's dive in. Now, if you are listening to these podcast on um on the kingdom of god and the sermon on the mount you're thinking hey where's chris get this stuff from that's a very good question and some of you have been asking me where like where do you get this from how do you know this where can i learn this about well i would say there's a couple of books i find really helpful my secret weapon is the jesus uh so the jewish study bible the Jewish Study Bible, which helps us look at the scriptures, the New Testament particularly, through the eyes of the Jewish faith, of which Jesus was a Jew. So it helps us explore it that way. Uh, another set of books that could be really helpful, Tom Wright. His commentaries on Matthew for everyone is very good as well. And if you ever want to get into just reading a little bit more about uh, God's book and the writers who wrote them and what they meant when they spoke. Actually, Tom Wright's books are brilliant. Uh, so it's Matthew for everyone and then you've got Mark for everyone and Luke for everyone, the book of Acts for everyone. And he just unpacks them and helps you see how that passage applies to the everyday. So that's also a really good book. Uh, and there, there are other places that are really helpful. Uh, things like the Lion Study Bible, uh, but I would say, you know, the Bible book by book, which is something I put together, is where I've tried to gather all of this stuff into one place. So you have one place to go and explore God's book. So there's some options for you for those that have been asking. Let's jump in. Let's read together from Matthew 7 and then we'll explore an aspect of our discipleship as we ask, seek and knock for God. Let me read to us from Matthew 7, uh, 7 to 12. So it says this, and this is Jesus teaching on the Sermon on the Mount. We entitle it, Ask, Seek and Knock. Ask, and it'll be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everybody who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. The one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you... If your son asks for bread, will be given a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, will be given a snake. If you then, though that you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything you do, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. So there's three things here he's saying, isn't there? We've got this whole asking, seeking, knocking bit. We've got this bit about God and answered prayer and this bit about bread and stones and fish and snakes. And then we've got the third bit around do to others on what you would want done to you. So there's three different sections to it. Um, so let's just look at these really and ask the question, you know, what does this mean for us as disciples? Because we have to ask that. What does this now look like? What changes tomorrow? because I read this today. 
So ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. So ask, seek and knock. Let's start there. So Jesus says three things. Asking, seeking and knocking. Well, they're all very similar, aren't they? Asking, seeking and knocking. Well, asking is what happens with your mouth. Seeking is kind of what you do with your legs as you as you walk and you look for something. And knocking is what you do with your hand on a door. So there's this element of, they're all similar, but actually slightly different. There's different facets to the asking, different facets to the seeking and different facets to the knocking. So ask, ask and it will be given to you. I think it's an interesting one because we often say to ourselves, but I ask and God doesn't. I've been asking and God isn't giving me what I'm asking for. And I think there's something interesting here about waiting. Something about waiting. People say that they asked God, um, but the question is, are you asking consistently and are you asking more than once? I was chatting to a, a friend of mine recently who is quite frustrated because they feel like God has abandoned them, that they've been praying for something for a long while. And uh, God is not giving them what they have uh, been asking. Therefore, God's broken his promise because he says that if we ask, it will be given to us. But what happens when we're asking for something that actually is against what Jesus wants for us or or is against what we need in our lives? And there's something interesting there, isn't there? You know, Jesus is just saying, look, ask it will be given to you. I suppose we have to have some small print and say, well, it depends partly on what you're asking, because if you start asking God to kill somebody, he ain't going to do it. So I think the context of this passage uh, is really about saying the presumption is we are already living out the Sermon on the Mount, that we are living this upside down kingdom. And therefore, when we approach God for something, we're not coming at it from a position of uh, this is for me. Uh, you know, this is what my ego wants. We're approaching God because of something we we know fits his vision for our lives already. Uh, but what happens if you're asking and you don't receive? I would simply say keep waiting because we give up way too soon. I know friends who say I've been praying for this and you talk to them about it. They've barely been praying about it. Uh, they may have wanted a answer for six months, but they've not actually prayed to God and listened to his voice for six months. Uh, It's been sporadic at best, or maybe that they've only recently asked and they're saying, but I've always wanted this, Lord. You know, it's been six months since I I first wanted this. You're not giving it to me. How much are you daily persisting in prayer? How are you daily persisting in prayer? We can't just ask once or twice. Uh, Asking, seeking and knocking is this persistence of keeping on going, keeping on asking, pursuing 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 God and not just asking once or twice and giving up and I think sometimes uh, that's what we end up doing don't we we ask but we don't get what we've asked for because we've not actually been persistent or it doesn't actually match up with what God wants for us so number one Jesus says ask the next is seek and I think we've got to do the seeking whilst we're asking because Sometimes we might find that we're asking for one thing, but as we seek the Lord, we actually find that there's something else that he wants to give us. And therefore, what we've been asking is not actually that helpful or it's not good for us. So he says, seek and you will find. Now, with the seeking and with the knocking, I want to share with you two mechanisms for understanding the Bible a little bit more. And these two mechanisms are, when was it first said? Is there another time in the Bible when this was first said? Or where, the other mechanism is, where in the Bible can I find something similar said? So whenever Jesus said something, I would argue, friends, he does not come up with new things. I believe Jesus takes things from the Old Testament and he plays jazz with them. He rehangs them. He reframes them in a new way. So it makes sense to us or it's useful in a new way. So when Jesus says something, we have to ask ourselves, has this been said before? Is there another place I can find this? Or we have to ask ourselves, where where does this word first get used in the Bible? So there's this, this theory of the first use. So when a word is first used, like the word garden, okay? So the word garden, Jesus was resurrected in the garden, well, the first use of the word garden actually takes us back to Genesis, where God created Adam and Eve and placed us in a 
garden where sin entered the world through the garden. So actually we have to uh, sometimes go back and say, when did this word first get used? So we're going to do this with the next two words, seeking and knocking. Now in seeking, we uh, we can find the word seek is, is all over the Old Testament. But one of the most significant places it comes in the Old Testament is in Psalm 63. And it, and it says this. So thinking Jesus is teaching about asking, seeking and knocking. Now let me just read to you Psalm 63 verse 1. It says this. You God are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. And in a dry parched land where there is no water. So we find the word seek in the Psalms. And right here in the Psalms, you have this beautiful picture of a person who is earnestly seeking the Lord. They're not just kind of going, oh, I'm, I'm looking, you know, knocking about trying to find where, where God might be. Earnestly seeking God. That's what we're told. What does it mean that this person is earnestly seeking the Lord? Because you could say the word earnestly we don't really use it often, do we? So what does it mean, earnestly seek the Lord? And I would say this. I have this line that I say to people when they tell me that uh, they can't find something. I say, have a second look before I ever look. So, for example, my kids will come to me and say, Dad, I can't find the torch. And I will say, have you looked in all of the cupboards in the kitchen for that torch? Yes, I have. And you can guarantee I will go in the kitchen, I'll pull open the drawer and it'll be right there in front of me so when the kids say to me dad i can't find the torch i say have a second look if you can't find it then come back to me and it's the same with my staff team at church they'll often come to me on a Sunday morning oh there's no coffee left i say go and have a look go and have a look open a cupboard take a second look go a little bit further than the initial look i had a, i was howling with laughter recently where a member of my staff team came to me and they said, Chris, we've run out of orange juice, orange squash for the kids at the end of church. And I said, have you looked carefully in the cupboards in the kitchen? Yes, I have. And I said, well, well go and have a second look at the cabinets in the kitchen. And if you can't find the, the squash, let me know and I'll come and have a look. They came back to me, can't find it. Can't find it at all. So I thought, like, okay. I'm sure we had loads. So I walk into the kitchen, I open up the cupboards, and I have a little peek into the cupboards. And uh, I would say the first seven inches of the cupboard, there was no squash. I then knelt down in front of the cupboard, and right in front of me, I could see five bottles of squash. What this individual had done is they'd opened up the cupboards, they'd looked in from regular eye height, They'd not actually gone any further, couldn't see it, shut the cupboard, it's not there. But when they changed their perspective, they got on their knees and they earnestly looked, then you could find it. Then then it was right there. So there's something quite earnestly is about going beyond the initial, nah, it's not there. And actually getting on your knees and having another go, another look. Uh, maybe a second time, third time, fourth time. I'm going to keep on looking. We just played this game in church today uh, as part of our uh, family service. And uh, the game was I'd hidden 20 coins, uh, chocolate coins, and the kids had to find these 20 coins. And uh, as they found a coin, they had to come to the front of church so I could count how many coins had been found. And there was three coins that were not found. Didn't find them. So... I got the adults looking for these three coins. They didn't find them. Service ends. I know there's three more coins out there because I put 20 coins out. I know I know they're there somewhere. Uh, we're not a massive building. So at the end of the service, I was like, oh, I'm going to have a quick look. And I walked through the fine back row of church where people had been sat, and there I found one of the coins. So I got one of the kids to come over and I'm gonna have a look behind that chair, and they found one of the missing coins. I then walked about eight row, uh, eight chairs down the row further and found another coin. And it's interesting, isn't it? Sometimes the initial look that we do, well, in a hurry, we miss something. But when we earnestly look, when we have a second or third look, or we come back and we keep on looking, then we find the thing that we couldn't find in the first place. So seeking, this idea of seeking earnestly from the Psalm 63 is, is really important. Seeking the Lord is not something you do in an instant and that's it. It's happened. 
It's something we do and we're persistent with. So ask, seek, and then knock. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Friends, this is not a polite British knock, like a little tap. This is banging on the door. So the, we just talked about uh, this idea of first use or first location. The first time uh, this kind of idea appears in a passage or the first time the word is used or the first time the word knock is used is in Genesis chapter 19 verses 1 to 2. Let me just read this to you. It says this, uh, and this is uh, from a passage of scripture uh, where we are located in Sodom and Gomorrah. So it says the two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night and then go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered, we will spend the night in the square. But Lot insisted so strongly that they did go with him and entered his house. He prepared a meal for them. He baked bread without yeast and they ate. Now you might go, hang on, Chris, I didn't hear the word knock appear there at all. Well, no, because it's uh, translated from the original Hebrew. The word knock in this passage is translated as insisted so strongly. So the first mention of the word knock is when Lot insists so strongly that the two angels come and stay at his house. The verse says he insisted so strongly that they did go with him. It's the word insist here. It's the, it's the, 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 um, the pushiness of the insistence. Uh, that is translated as, could be pound, or it can also be translated as knock. So insisting, pounding, knocking, and implies that Lot earnestly knocked and pounded on the door that they would come and be his guests. Uh, I love this. So in the Old Testament, the first concept or use of this idea of knocking is in the context of earnestly seeking somebody to come in and receive full hospitality. So Jesus says, knock and the door will be open to you. There's something about Jesus is not talking about a polite British knock. He's talking about a knocking that is so persistent it's bang, 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 bang. Let me in, let me in, let me in, let me in. Insisting, pounding, knocking. Uh, I, and then after this persistence, it says that these angels, these lords, they come into the house, they enter the house, and he prepares a meal for them, baking bread without yeast, and they eat. So Jesus says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you persistently knocking so when the door is open to you it's almost like what jesus is saying there is taking us back to lot if you are persistent the door will open you will come into the house where you'll find a meal prepared for you bread is uh, baked and you will eat and you will rest in his presence so asking seeking knocking I wonder if we should just reflect on what does it actually mean for us to ask and seek and knock? You know, what is this about? Well, I think asking, seeking, knocking, yes, it is totally about prayer. Being persistent to God with your prayer life. And I would really argue that many of us are not as persistent in our prayer life as we like to think. And then we get frustrated because God has not given us what we want. Making ourselves the centre of the universe all the time. God is the centre and we have to be like a persistent widow coming and, 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 and asking and asking and seeking. Come on, Lord, will you, will you, will you? Knocking, banging, you know, come on, let me in, Lord, let me in. I'm being persistent here. So prayer is about asking, seeking and knocking. The Bible is about asking, seeking and knocking. As you read God's book, we're asking questions of it. We are seeking God's wisdom in it. We are knocking at the door of God when we read the Bible. God, let me in. May, me, may I see your kingdom. May I see your work. 
So asking, seeking and knocking is prayer. It's the Bible. And I would say it is the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, filled with the Spirit of God, receiving the Spirit of God. We are coming before the Lord. You know, the Lord is now with us, but we are now seeking his tenderness, his closeness, his presence. Uh, as we pursue God, as we chase after God, we're chasing after his presence to be with us. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. So asking, seeking and knocking is about prayer. It's about the Bible. It's about the Spirit. It's about looking for God in the everyday. Ask it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will open for you. So what's the response that God has to us asking, seeking and knocking? Well, Jesus gives us two responses. You know, what does he say in verse 9? Which of you, if your son asks for bread, were you going to give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, you're going to give him a snake. In other words, what is God going to do with our prayers? God does not curse us with bad things in prayer. Uh, he's not going to give us something else to what we're asking for. Uh, but he will give us the bread. Uh, he is going to give us the fish. He's going to give us what we ask for. So God gives good gifts. And something here, you know, the, the things that we might look for from God uh, and what we might receive from God may look a bit different, might look a bit strange. God, I'm asking for this thing. You're giving me that thing. But the reality is, friends, is this. God gives what we need, not always what we want. God does give us what we need. There's times in my life where I have asked for things and God has not given it the way that I'd asked, partly because my prayers were way too small. Oh, God has a better plan for our lives. God gives good gifts. He's not going to give you stones and st stones and snakes. You might be asking for bread and a fish, and he might give you a burger instead. You might ask for bread and a fish, and he, he might give you a nice sandwich instead. But he's not going to give you a curse. He's not going to give you a stone or a snake. That's not how God works. And then Jesus, at the end of this, pulls it all together with one last thing. He gives a summary of the whole teaching of the Bible. He says this, So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. So Jesus is saying that summarizing everything of the law of the prophets is this. Do to others as you want done to yourself. You know, Jesus has talked about walking the extra mile, turning the other cheek, blessed are the peacemakers. He's talked about how you behave towards other people, how you use the resources that you have. So Jesus said to sum everything up, absolutely everything, is this. Do to others as you want done to yourself. Don't treat people any different to how you would treat yourself. So what does this look like? Let's, let's give some examples of this in everything due to others as you would have done to you. Let's just think this through practically. So if you want others to treat you with kindness and respect, then we have to make sure that we treat them with kindness and respect. Don't insult or mistreat them. Treat them the way you want to be treated. If you hope people will forgive you, then you, when you make a mistake then we equally have to have the same grace and forgiveness when they fail towards you. So if you want people to be forgiven towards you, then you need to be forgiven towards them. If you want to be listened to and understood, make sure you listen carefully and seek to understand others. Seek to understand their thoughts and their feelings. If you want to be thanked, then make sure you thank others. Make sure you're showing gratitude to them if you want to be somebody who is thanked then make sure you thank and show others the appreciation that you want to receive because it's contagious people catch this stuff uh, if you if you don't like being lied to or deceived then don't lie or deceive other people be honest uh, be honest and other people will be honest back to you if you wish people would think the best of you then try thinking the best of them. Uh, think about them the way that you would want to be thunk about. You know, don't sit there, grumble and gossip, and then wonder why they grumble and gossip about you. If you want to be treated in a certain way, make sure you treat the other in that same way. If you appreciate it when somebody's patient with you, then make sure you are patient with them. Uh, even when you're struggling, 
be patient with them. If that's what you're wanting in your life, make sure you have it for others. And if you enjoy receiving gifts on your birthday, then make sure that you're somebody who gives gifts on your birthday. Yeah? So whatever you want others to do towards you, forgiving, loving, caring, being hospitable, make sure that's what you are doing to others. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. Because this sums up the law and all of the prophets. So there you go. Asking, seeking, knocking. Asking means going beyond the first time. Seeking means give a second, third, fourth or fifth look. Knocking means being persistent and not polite like a British person. But keeping on knocking, keeping on banging because eventually the door is going to open to you and you'll be invited into the house where the bread has been baked and you can eat. And don't forget, God gives good gifts to those who ask of him. He's not going to give you a stone and a snake if you've asked for bread and you've asked for a fish. And don't forget Jesus says, whatever you want to be treated like, make sure you treat others. So there you go. Asking, seeking and knocking in the kingdom of God. Friends, until next time, grace and peace. And this week, why don't you practice the art of asking, seeking and knocking? 